English astrophysicist Stephen Hawking, who has an IQ of 160, was diagnosed with motor neuron disease at the age of 21, after which he almost gave up on his studies. However, inspired by his relationship to his soon-to-be first wife, Jane Wilde, he returned to his academic pursuits and obtained his PhD in 1965. Hawking is perhaps best known for his pioneering theories on black holes, in addition to his best-selling 1988 book, A Brief History of Time. Theoretical physicist Albert Einstein developed the general theory of relativity, one of the most popular theories in the history of time, and it's the, one of the two pillars of modern physics, alongside quantum mechanics, and he's best known in popular culture for sticking his tongue out in photos, and also his mass-energy equivalence formula, E equals mc squared, etc., dubbed the world's most famous equation. So it's a shame, then, that his exact IQ is not known as he never took the test, but experts put it somewhere between a range of 160 and 190, even though, apparently, famously, often couldn't remember where he lived, which is brilliant, it means you could be a genius and unable to find your way home. The concept of IQ didn't exist in his time, but experts believe his score would have been somewhere between 180 to 190. How they work this out? I've got no idea, it's probably nonsense. It's certainly possible though, as he's considered to be one of the greatest painters of all time, and perhaps the most diversely talented person to have ever lived. He was a polymath, a painter, a sculptor, an architect, a musician, a mathematician, engineer, inventor, anatomist, geologist, cartographer, botanist, and a writer. Wow, that's, that's more things than I do. Leonardo has often been described as the archetype of the Renaissance man, a man of unquenchable curiosity and feverishly inventive imagination. Mislav Predovec is a Croatian mathematics professor with a reported IQ between 190 to 192. His unique abilities were obvious from a young age. To put Predovec's results into context, one of every billion citizen will have an IQ of over 190. His wife Mariana said that you can say he is a genius, but there are things he finds difficult. When we buy a mobile phone, I'm the one that puts it together and puts the SIM card in. The same thing with the dishwasher. Hang on a minute, he's one of the smartest people of all time and he has trouble putting a SIM card in a phone. I mean, modern phones can be complicated, but putting the SIM card in is usually the easy bit. Although it can be sometimes a bit fiddly working out how to take the back of the case off. Sorry, I'm getting distracted. Gary Kasparov is a Russian chess grandmaster. What a name. I don't mean Gary Kasparov, I mean a Russian chess grandmaster. That's the sort of thing that would look good on business cards. Anyway, he's considered to be the greatest chess player of all time. From 1986 until his retirement in 2005, Kasparov was ranked as the world number one for 225 out of 228 months. In 1997, he became the first world champion to lose a match to a computer under standard time controls when he lost to the IBM supercomputer Deep Blue in a highly publicized match. He states that IBM cheated during the computerized match, accusing the computer giant that humans intervened. Either way, he has an IQ of 194, making him one of the highest ever recorded. So he shouldn't be too sad, even though he's convinced that he got cheated by a computer, which does sound a bit, I don't know, who knows. Evangelos Katsiolis is a Greek medical doctor and psychiatrist. He's known for his high intelligence test scores, with several reports stating that he's achieved some of the highest scores ever recorded on IQ tests designed to measure exceptional intelligence. Katsiolis has reported an IQ of 205 on the standard Binet scale with SD16, which is equivalent to an IQ of 198.4 on the Wechsler scale. Only one in 30 billion people will match his intelligence levels. Kim Ung Yong, who has an IQ of 210, could speak fluently when he was just six months old and was a guest student in physics at Hanyang University at the age of three. He was able to read Japanese, Korean, German, English and many other languages by his third birthday, which is frankly just showing off. When he was four years old, his father said he had memorized about 2,000 words in both English and German, which again is just his father showing off. He wrote poetry and two short stories by the time he was four years old, when he'd also scored more than 200 on an IQ test normally given to seven-year-olds. 
He left NASA at the age of 16, and although he was offered a place at Korea's most prestigious university, he rejected the offer and instead decided to pursue a PhD in civil engineering. Christopher Hirata has an IQ of 225. At the age of just 13, he received a gold medal at the International Physics Olympiad, which is something that I can't believe exists. And the next year, he was enrolled into Caltech University, which means he commenced his university education at the age of 14 years. At 16, he was already working with NASA on a project exploring the possibility of colonizing Mars, and eventually got his PhD at 22 from Princeton. How are you feeling right now about your life as you sit here watching a YouTube video? Because I mean, as I sit here reading out a script for a YouTube video, I'm feeling pretty bad. So hopefully, yeah, don't worry. You might achieve something, just not this much. With an IQ of 230, Terence Tao began participating in the International Mathematic Olympiads, again, can't believe it exists, at age 10. He won a bronze medal in 1986, a silver medal in 1987, and a gold medal in 1988, becoming the youngest ever gold medalist in the Mathematical Olympiad. When he was 14, Terence commenced his full-time university education. By the time he was 16, he'd earned his bachelor's and master's degree and had his PhD at 20. Even though technically his IQ was undeterminable, William James Siddis is believed to have achieved the highest IQ ever recorded. Experts put that figure between 250 to 300. Born in 1898, he was an American child prodigy with exceptional mathematical abilities and apparently knew eight languages by the age of eight. As an adult, he was claimed to have been conversant in over 40 languages and dialects. He entered Harvard at age 11 to study mathematics, subsequently making him the youngest person to ever enroll at the prestigious university and also probably the person who had the most difficulty making friends. Once he began teaching, after completing his studies, he found that students older than him in his class did not appreciate being educated by what they still saw as a boy. His rapid success in education meant he suffered socially and was therefore unable to maintain close friendships. See? Called it. Called it. You can't go to university when you're 11 and expect to get invited out for drinks. It's just not how it works. He was a well-known war draft protester during World War I and nearly went to prison for it. Instead, he ended up spending a year in a sanatorium as arranged by his parents. Following his release in 1921, the troubled genius moved away from maths and education and lived his life without them. He died in 1944 of a cerebral hemorrhage at the age of 46. That's quite a sad story. But so yeah, so I guess that we have to take that on board. We may not be achieving much with our lives right now, we may not be the smartest people in the world, but perhaps we're happier for it. Yeah, I'm going with that. I'm sticking with that one. Goodbye. Thanks everyone for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. For more top 10 lists, be sure to subscribe by clicking on the button that you can see now.